All right, here we go with number one. We're getting rhythmic with our legato. One, two, three, four. One twenty. One, two, three, four. I was supposed to pick that last note, but I instinctively slid to it. Hey, if you end up sliding that, that's totally mm -hmm. fine. 161, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. Alright, number two. Where slides are supposed to happen. 60 beats per minute. 1, 2, three, four. Twenty. One, two, three, four. I'm sorry. My brain decided to go somewhere else, and then my fingers are just following the melody in my head and played the right notes in the wrong way. Let's try this again. One, two, three, four. Sixty. One, two, one, two, three, four. Number three. Sixty. Hopefully, I can pay better attention this time. One. Two, three, four. in if you like. I mean you're right there on it. 120, 1, 2, 3, 4. Sixty one, two, one, two, three, four.
bonus points if you can figure that out. I was moved by the spirit of the music. All right. Um, and, yeah, just when working on the arpeggio progressions, remember what we did. You did half time and worked that up from 60 to 140. So I always like going past the, let's say that you do in a song, or in this case, you know, doing those arpeggio examples. So doing the halftime thing, 120, is the equivalent of doing the regular time of 60, right? So going past where you want to be for the entire thing makes it much easier to put everything together. Because if you can go 10, 20 plus beats per minute faster than the required speed for something, then it's going to make the required speed that much easier. So, what will most likely happen as you polish up different chord transitions, it's going to carry over into the other progressions because you've already trained your fingers to get into those shapes more effectively. So, I think that about covers it. But if you have any questions, please let me know, and I'll see you next week.